Welcome to Lesson 13, Material Operations Part 1 of the SDS2 Getting Started series. In this video, we will explore the addition of material and some material fit operations. With SDS2, more than just the rolled sections found in the material file editor can be added to SDS2. For example, when I go to my model material, let's go ahead and tear this off for the moment places over here on the side. And now I'm going to go into my help documentation. And we can see that there are various section sizes that can be added through the rolled section. Existing material, this is material that's already found in the model. So for example, if you added in a clip angle already, it'll become an existing material which you can reuse. We can see that there's rectangular plate, round plate, bent plate, rolled plate, flat plate layout, bent plate layout, round bar, square bar, flat bar, grading, grading treads, decking, and we can also see that there are shear and threaded studs, as well as turn solid and shell element, clevises, turnbuckles, concrete slab layout, wall layouts, and bolts can be added as material. I will begin by adding in a bent plate pour stop. Let's start by adding in a few construction lines so we have some points to work off of. One foot six. Again, one foot six. Let's go over here and use base off a of member line to get this ending point. Set that at zero. And return out of my construction line. Now, when you're working with material, there's one major difference between adding in a material and a member. When we added in a member, regardless of whether we went from right to left or left to right, bottom to top or top to bottom, the system automatically adjusted the left end, which is indicated by the piece mark and the target, in the proper left end of the member that is used according to standard practices for erection. Material, on the other hand, is different. When you add in a piece of material, the first point that you select will be the left end. So if you go ahead and select your first point going from first point right to first point left, the left end of that material will be at the right end. From the material drop down that we tore off, I am now going to go to the add material and then go ahead and tear that off. Let's place this down here. Now whenever you're doing just one bend in a plate, you're going to want to use bent plate. If you're going to have multiple bends, for example, you're creating something like a Z. By the way, there is a Z section in the material file editor. But let's say, for example, you have something with multiple bends, then you're going to use what's called the bent plate layout. Now, if I have just a standard rectangular plate, I'm going to use rectangular plate. Now we do have fit and cut operations to take a rectangular plate and make it into whatever you want with rounded edges and so forth. Round plate, pretty straightforward. Flat plate layout has its pros and cons. It is a useful tool, but usually I would choose the rectangular plate before using a flat plate layout and make any cuts in that rectangular plate. Round bars, square bars, flat bars, grading, these are all pretty straightforward and obvious on what's being used for each of these. Finally, if I'm creating a curved, I'm going to use the rolled plate because the rolled plate is going to give me a unfolded view, whereas the turn solid and shell element will not. Okay, let's start by selecting our bent plate. Next, I'm going to locate which member to attach the material to. With SDS2, you don't have to add material and then say weld it. As soon as you are adding the material, you're selecting which member it's going to be attached to. In this case, I'm going to collect this B underscore 17. Using my intersection construction line to keep it on the same plane, which is 114.6, I'm going to locate the first point. Now remember, this, is, this first point will be the left end of this material. Let's go all the way over here, and we're going to select the second point, which would be the right end of this particular material, which opens up this dialog box. 
When you're adding in this piece of material, especially when we're dealing here with bent plate, you're actually looking from your left end, which is point zero, or your first point, towards your right end along the profile of this particular member. So, as you can see from this picture that I'm going to show you right here, that when we're going to look down this profile of the member, you can now see the direction for the 90 degrees. You can also see what's going to be your leg one and your leg two. Now, don't panic. We do have the ability, until you get used to this, we do have the ability to go ahead and rotate this material. You can also go ahead and modify it as well. But we want to try to get this right the first time out of the box. Now, material thickness, let's go ahead and use a quarter inch. I'm going to use a leg one of one foot five. Let's go put in a leg two of six inches. Bend radius. Now, the manual does have the proper radiuses for bends, but we'll use the old rule of thumb of twice the thickness of the plate. And the bend angle we're going to put in here is minus 90 degrees. Now, remember again, as you look at this, you can see it goes 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So negative would bend it up that clockwise rotation that we want to have. For now, we're going to come in here. We're going to put a left end setback here of one quarter inch. And we know what our left end is from that first point that we selected. Let's go ahead and hit OK. As we look at this particular piece, we're going to see that this window appears. Now, this is important. This is your rotate material. Now, we can rotate around the member's coordinate system. Notice the X is going from here, the left to the right. Z is coming out, and Y is going up and down. This is using the member coordinate system. We can change that to a global coordinate system, in which case we're going to have the X going in this direction. If I can come down here and pull this so we can see a little bit easier, we're going to see the Y going up, and the Z, of course, is going to be coming towards us in and out. And you'll also notice that you have a material coordinate system, which is going to, in this case, is matching the global coordinate. Let's just go back to the member coordinate system. Now, these options up here on top allow you to rotate in the X direction, the Y direction, or the Z direction. So if I go ahead and select the X direction, I can go ahead and hit the Rotate Plus, and what's going to happen is this material is going to rotate around that x-axis. If I go around the z-axis, this material is going to rotate around that z-axis. And of course the y-axis, we can see how that is now rotating around that y-axis. Of course you have the option to mirror this particular material. Now you can change the increments, which by the way is also the default to set in the user options where you can go in and set this actual increment for default. But I can go ahead and change this instead of being 90 degrees, let's go ahead and change this to 45 degrees. Go ahead, let's rotate around that Y because it's easy to see. And we can see that we're rotating around 45 degrees. Now you can also type in the values as well. This can get a little tricky, but you can actually type in the values into these fields. So for example, if I wanted to rotate at 60, type it in, go ahead and select Tab, and we can see that it's rotated at 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and reset this back to its original position. I'm going to select this title so that it's active because you notice how this one is active and now we want focus to be on this main window here so I can scroll in and rotate around to take a look at that particular piece. Once again, now you'll notice these coordinates didn't update right away. That's easy enough to fix by going in here and just doing a plus and then a minus. And we can see that going along the x-axis, going from that left end to the right end, the y is going up and the z following that member coordinate system. Great, let's go ahead and hit the OK for this piece once I set it back to its original using my undo. Okay. Now, once I hit OK, the system's going to prompt me for a material dimension reference point. This is where the system is going to dimension from the point I select to the left end of the member. As we zoom in, we can see that this piece is a quarter inch off from that center. I'm going to locate this dimension right here 
at this top corner. Now again, it's going to be dimensioned from this point to the material. It's just a way to try to help you clean up the dimensions a little bit before you actually get into the 2D cleanup from there. And we can now see that we've added in this piece of material. Now let's continue on with the next piece of material. Now I want to use the same value, so I'm going to start the same kind of orientation from point one to point two. Once again, let's go down here to this bent plate. I'm going to select the member. Now I can I could have continued adding in material and still have it attached to that previous member. I could have added in another bent plate because I was in that bent plate command. But we want to have this bent plate on this particular member. So, using my intersection construction line, looking at my elevation 114.6, that's correct. I'm going to locate my first point, locate my second point. Now, all these values, just like SDS2 does, it retains them. This could be a good thing and a bad thing. As we can see, that material setback is at a quarter inch. I'm going to set it to zero at the left end and put a quarter inch over here at the right end. Again, here pops up that rotate material screen. We're just going to OK out of that. And I'm going to put a reference point right out here using intersection construction line. Now we're still in that material add command. I don't want to add any more material to this member. So again, I'm going to return just like I did in my previous exercise. And now we've added in this bent plate going around the outside of this material here or should say members. So to conclude this part one, first of all, when a material is added, you select the member. We can see when I hover on top of this particular member that this material is attached to this member. We can also see when we select that it is attached to this member. Nothing else is required except for selecting the member when you add the material. When you add in a piece of material, the first point selected is the left end, regardless of whether you're going right to left or left to right, bottom to top or top to bottom, which is unlike members. When you're adding in a bent plate, the points that you pick are actually the heel of that particular material. Finally, let's go ahead and double click to edit this particular material. You'll notice that there's a checker plate option. You will not get a raised pattern, but in the bill of material, the system will designate that this is a checkered plate. Centered. This does not place the center on the center line of the plate, but what it does is it actually goes and creates that center right on that radial point. So if I go ahead and surface on top of this, if I were to go ahead and use center, that point which I picked, which was down here, right here, this center point would move down to this location. Center is here, not in the middle of the plate. This concludes our part one.